Welcome back to another edition of Wide Bay's Creative Space. Um, I'm so lucky that today I have a prize winning artist, local talented young lady, Heather Johnson. Welcome Heather. Thank you very much Karina. How lovely of you to say that. <laughs> you are such a, as you're such a versatile artist. Now what was your journey into art and I guess where did it start? Well um, I did a little bit of art at school and I really loved it but it never really developed at school and then I got on with my life and travelled and stuff like that and um, then when I my children had grown up and I settled down into Bundaberg after travelling I really wanted to learn how to just draw because I was a stick figure that was it so I went to Bill Bonner and a lot of people in Bundaberg have been to Bill Bonner and he's such an amazing person to and he taught me how to draw and then I went from there and um, l knew that I wanted to do watercolour so I uh, went to a few watercolour. So what was it about watercolour that first inspired you? Um, I just love the flow but I'm a water person as well because for a job I did I was a scuba diving instructor and I just was surrounded by water my whole life <laughs> and, and then I uh, just um, saw watercolour and some of the washes they do and and it just I just fell in love with the colours and how um, well I think it's easy just to put a little bit of water on the paper and dab a little bit of paint and see what happens and it's magic to me. So <laughs> from going to watercolour and uh, I, I guess in art a lot of people like to well not necessarily be pigeonholed but we often hear the term, you know, they're just a watercolour artist or they just specialise in acrylic or oil. You've actually done quite a lot. So it's not just watercolour, but behind us we have, there's, uh, you were saying, one of your first paintings, which was the pencil one. Well, that's graphite. That's one of the first ones. Probably one of the very first ones I did with Bill Bonner. Um, that's just done with graphite, which is a lead pencil. And... Uh, that turned out brilliantly and that was on my mum's wall for many years. When you first started your art journey, how hard was it? Did you find it easy? When you were saying stick figure, I hear so many people saying, I can't even draw, I can only do a stick figure. Was it easy to get your head around the different techniques? Yes, because I had a passion for it and I wanted to do it for a long time. But because I was off travelling on a boat and, that, and didn't have any access to land a lot of the time I couldn't get in but when I finally did get in I was so passionate to learn and I found um, you know the school of fine art and I went along and got right but uh, yeah it was pretty easy he, he, the teacher is amazing was amazing yeah. so we talk about watercolor and the flow and the mm. different uh, I guess the different hues of color that it brings so I'm looking at some of the watercolors just behind us that one there and and that one there what was the inspiration behind those well this one here I went to India with my brother uh, in 2019 and I bought a postcard I mean I bought many things in India but and this was one of the postcards and I had to draw this man's face because it was a ma oh paint it draw it and then paint it and uh, that was that one. But this here is, um, I went to Colleen Helmore and every, a lot of people in Bundaberg would know Colleen. Um, and she taught me for about six years, I went to her. And this is a very simple, it's unbelievable, but it's a very simple thing to do. It's just washes and then you put the trees in the front. <laughs> That's how easy it is. So I, no, I I, I, I'm not laughing at this, but I, I have to say that um, for the people that don't know, Heather recently won um, a prize at the Moore Park Arts Festival and she didn't think she was going to win and she actually left. So we had to call her back and say, come back. Now, how hard was that painting to do? Well, it was in oil, but that's it there, that, that particular painting. Um, it took me probably four minutes to do that painting because it's done with rollers. Um, there is a technique behind it though. You have three colours, you put them on glass and use a roller on the glass and then have a piece of paper next to you and you roll it. And that's basically what that is. It's, um, 
So I guess that's showing people that art does not have to be complicated. No. And I remember seeing that at the art show thinking, I really like the colours in it. And I think it's one of those things with art, if you like it and it sings to you, then you enjoy it no matter how complicated or how simple it is. What was your reaction when you won? I was in disbelief because there was some amazing uh, art there. And, uh, but I had been told by other people that, 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 that they liked that tip particular piece. And I didn't think, because I had it used just in my folder. And I had three pieces and when I went to my brother frame, so I gave them, him these three pieces to frame. I just thought I'll do something with that. And um, so that's how they turned out. They turned, like it's a triptych really, but that particular one was by itself down at Moore Park and uh, it won, so. So talking about winning art prizes, another one that recently you won was the Gattaca's Waste to Art competition. Yeah, that was, that was quite a, an interesting art exhibition and there were some pretty good artists there, uh, you know, a lot of well-known established artists. So the fish that you'll see up on the screen is the prize that is the winning entry that Heather won. Now, so talking about this fish, what did you name the fish? How did the inspiration come about for the fish? And what were the materials you used? Well, the materials that I used was all marine debris. So I called it Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I collected, uh, I've been collecting um, marine debris for a long time, but, and I had a lot of it and I made a, a ephemeral art in my backyard on a tree. And uh, one trip I did when I was down in South Australia at my mother's place last year, I went to a place called Robe and they had one of these fish and it was massive. I said, that's something I could do with my, you know, I got an inspiration. I just had this inspiration in my head and I thought, okay. So when I got back, I, um, a friend of mine put in my entry form into the Gattaca's Waste to Art. I said, I haven't got time. He said, yeah, you've got three weeks. So I did it in three weeks. And um, it was all just uh, like ropes and old nets and boys and, and rubbish that had washed up, it had all been washed up on this particular uh, coastline um, down in South Australia and some here in the Wide Bay and stuff like that, you know, just all. So with the fish, I can leave it outside and it still looks the same as the day that I made it sort of thing because it's all come out of the water. So we were talking just before we went to air and I was uh, talking about the fish and you were talking about other art journeys that you've been on. We was, I was also mentioning, you were saying that you were hiding up the back, not expecting to win. It seems to be a, it seems to be a theme with me, not expecting to win. Well, um, I mean, there was a motorbike there that was just amazing, made out of, uh, you know, kettles and stuff like that, you know, boiling kettles and stuff like that. And it, it, look, it was beautiful. There was lots of stuff there that was about 250 entries, I think. It, it was a fantastic art show. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. And there was lots of people there. And there was not a very big space. There was all these hundreds of people there. And so I just sat at the back on the cushion. Now, your journey into art, you've not only done watercolours, you've done your graphite, but you've also dabbled in making some naturally made soaps, which we have at the back there which I can personally say are very good. You've also dabbled at doing mosaics. Now we're talking about this and how you were saying when you thought about it, you had done quite a lot in your art mm. and how you were lucky enough that uh, you actually did a bit of work with Paul Perry when yes. he did his, um, his, did his Milby exhibition for the toilet block out at Bagara. What was that like when you first did mosaics? Uh, when I first, I was sort of by myself, you know, I just sort of went into a book. But then I was at some art thing with Paul and uh, he, he was talking about doing this mosaic. So I went along and it was incredible because he's got lots of energy and he's very, very talented with his mosaic, with everything actually. And um, 
yeah, now I have, for that result, him asking me to go along there and lots of other people, I never realised it at the time, but my mosaics, I've got two pieces on that um, toilet block at Arches Beach, they'll be there for the rest of the time, you know, forever. Thanks to Paul, you know, which is amazing. Yeah, I think um, we have such an amazing talent pool in Wide Bay mm. and what I love seeing is how other artists collaborate, you know, collaborate with other artists and how it's like we're sharing the love for art. So from here, where do you see yourself in another year's time? Like what are you doing? You mentioned you're doing pottery now. Yes. Um, I've just started again. I used to do pottery many, many years ago, but uh, then went back to work and all that and um, had children. But now I've got back into it. It's quite beautiful. And I just make pots and I've actually got to go tomorrow and glaze all my pots. So I do that at uh, a lady's place. Um, and she's got a kiln and we just have, there's a few of us and we just have a lovely time. I've actually joined Wide Bay Burnet Potters. So we go all over, um, next month we've got a, um, a workshop to go to for a weekend that we're going to make quirky teapots. So what, are, what is it about pottery that... You get your uh, hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, you were mentioning before we talked about how when you were at uh, a particular class, they said that you were a builder. Yes. So it, it seems to be because you mentioned you liked building things, mm. whether it's the mosaics, whether it's pottery, making the soaps. Mm. So where does the actual art, so your watercolours, does that slow down or does that still keep in demand? Um, no, I, I love the thought of just sitting and doing a watercolour. I do it nearly every day. Just a little one. Like at the moment, somebody sent me a packet of um, post, uh, you know, postcards that's got, they're clear, but they've got watercolour paper. It's made from water. So I'm just um, doing those postcards at the moment, just little beach scenes and palm scenes and mountain scenes and stuff on it. And I just love it. I just love to sit and that calms me down. Because all the other time my head's, could do this, I could do that, you know, <laughs> like most people in art, the art world or any world really, I suppose, I don't know. Mm. So I've often thought of you as a reluctant artist and I, I mean that in the sense that you don't tend to put yourself out there a lot and exhibitions seem to be very, not daunting, but you seem very shy sometimes. <laughs> so can we expect to see more of Heather Johnson and winning competitions? Well, I hope so, because at the moment I'm, um, I'm going now to a class where I'm being taught acrylics, and um, but not only acrylics, I'm learning, um, going back to basics, learning the elements and principles of your art piece and how to put an art together so people do like it. So I've never sort of studied that extensively before so hopefully I'll know how to do that and uh, so it's an make pleasing art. Yeah, yeah it's it's an interesting concept in theory when you say putting art together to I guess to please other people or have other people like it. Yes. I've always thought art was in the eye of the beholder and yeah. <laughs> I have to admit there are, are some art that I've looked at and I've thought I just don't get it. And it has been a bit questionable. But like you said, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. So what is the thing that you're doing acrylics at the moment? I do a lot of acrylics. Mm. And what is it about acrylics that you're finding? Is there anything that you're finding not as enjoyable? Uh, not as enjoyable. It hasn't got the flow of watercolour, but I still really love it, you know, because it's got vibrant colours as well. Probably a little bit more than watercolour, you know, and I like lots of colour. But nothing that I don't, you know, like. So where can so, you, what's the next art competition you're, you're going to do? So I can say to people, well, if you want to go and see Heather, go and see her work at this well, I'll be at the. I'll do a landscape 
for the Gatti uh, not Gatticus, for Hazard, which is our local art society on Walker Street there. And uh, hopefully I'll put something in Agnes Waters in May, that is, I think. That's, mm. yes, the 1770 art show. Seven, which, yes. Which will be interesting because you'll have to let me know which class you're entering so I won't enter anything. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Karina. <laughs> um, sculptures, what, what's your inspiration for sculptures? I mean, Going back, you mentioned that you're a diver. So do you see, I noticed that there are lots of your drawings and lots of your paintings that have these amazing colours from under the sea. Your travels around the world and, and diving, do you get lots of inspiration from that? Uh, yes, I'm always um, trying to uh, perfect painting the ocean, you know, but I find that, that probably one of the hardest things to do but I'm still, because I've only been um, doing watercolour for five or six years and, and um, like Colleen said, she's been doing it for 30 years and she's still perfecting her. So, yeah, but I do, I get inspiration from, from all the colours and, and I have sat out on Fraser Island and done a bit of plain air uh, watercolour, take my stuff over and paint. That's quite beautiful to do. Mm. So we talk about what I know every artist seems to have a, a little niche of the one particular thing that they just seem to really enjoy painting. I know for me most of my friends can look at a painting and say that's one of mine because somehow there seems to be a particular flower that creeps into my paintings. So do you have a particular thing that you like to paint? Not really. I like to do trees and leaves and gum nuts and, and then on that side of it, I love doing that. And um, especially leaves because you can put so many different colours. And uh, I love to, I don't know how many times I've sat at Moore Park Beach, and which is just down the road from where I live, and um, painted the sea. Just sat, I've got all my visual art little books and everything have got hundreds of paintings of the beach and the trees hanging over and yeah. So we talk about art and we've talked about your journey. How important do you think it is to break down the misconceptions that you have to have the letters after your, le you know, your name or you have to have a PhD in art to enjoy it and there is no there's no wrong time to take up art. No, definitely But not. for you, how important has art been in your, I guess, personal and emotional well-being? Oh, well, it's been a bit of a lifesaver, really, because I just love it, you know. And, um, you know, we travelled on a boat and it gets very boring when you're crossing oceans and stuff. So if you can get out something to do, even in the house, you know, instead of um, watching TV or something like that, I just paint. And it's, is that what you want? I don't know what to say. So how, how, um, so we talk about, you know, the painting and how good it's for your emotional well-being. I know COVID's been over for a while, but how important was art to you during that COVID period when we couldn't get to exhibitions and we couldn't travel. What did you do at home? Um, I didn't spend a lot of time at home, to tell you the truth. We were on our boat then and we just... It, COVID didn't really affect us a lot because we are out at sea. Did you oh, do, sorry about that. Did you, much, did you do much uh, in the way of drawing or...? Any? Always, always had uh, paint sets with me, always had my graphic uh, pencils and always I've got 50 visual diaries full because <laughs> I just keep sketching and painting and yeah always or oh, yeah yeah I think I I think one of the most important things is to get get the message across to people as we're talking about it before the misconception that art has to be I think it, there's a lot of people that think art has to be expensive or it you have to do this course, you have to do that course. And, and I know when I first started off, I didn't do any courses. I just was self-taught and now I've started to do the courses to, like, as you said, perfect it. Mm. 
So what would you say to ladies who've gone down the same journey, that are, their children have all left home and they're sitting there with nothing to do, maybe there aren't, what would you say to them? Well, it doesn't have to be expensive. I, I've been going to Colleen and I'm a member of the Art Society, which is only $30 a year to join. And um, then you can go to Colleen or any of those people go along on a Tuesday or a Thursday and you don't pay any money and there's always somebody to help you with your art and if you want to do a specific course like I did with watercolour it costs you twenty dollars for about three hours every week or you don't have to go every week either and it's, so that I don't find that very expensive at all if you want to um, do your artwork and um, but it's nice to have that passion and go and do it well, I'm, I'm glad that you um, have pointed that out because there's a, a lot of people out there, all ages, all, all you know, all stages of their art journey that are probably feeling a little bit intimidated because oh. I, I know that for some people art can be intimidating because I've heard it from so many people, I, I can't paint, I can't draw a stick figure, I'm no good at it, but I believe that everyone's got a talent for art and join, as you said, joining these art societies well, is another um, way, you know, great mentors. There's also U3A. I think, what, what age do you have to be to join U3A? 45 or something like that? Mm, U3A, I'm pretty sure it's 50 and over, but I'm sure oh, that they've okay. got classes. They do. Know. They've got Ross Driver that does the watercolour classes and his watercolour classes are always full and he's brilliant. And uh, a lot of really good artists come out of him. And that's only paying, what, U3A, which is $35 a year. And so you don't pay to go to his class. You just go along and, and, I think, uh, and paint. As I said, there's art exhibitions. Now, we have some wonderful art galleries in the Wide Bay, but also in Bundaberg. So, you know, we've got our local art, you know, council-run art gallery. We have the Hazard Gallery as well. But there also seems to be these exhibitions popping up. Um, we now have people like the Book Boutique getting on board, yes, displaying. Yes. So there's all these different mediums for people to go along and actually have a look at art, mm, which mm. I think is absolutely fantastic in this area. So the next stage for you after all this, could you ever see yourself teaching? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. I have... Um experimented with my family. I had seven family members that wanted to do a little bit of watercolour. So I um, set it all up just like a normal lesson, you know, had some paper put out and, you know, the water and pencils and everything, just how you would set up. And uh, it went fantastically and everyone come out with a really lovely little painting. And so I would like to develop that more, but I think, um, yeah, I'm still in early stages with that because, you know, there right. is a lot of people out there that can do it a lot better than what I can. But, I mean, it would be fun to do it with just friends and, and people, yeah. I know a lot of artists don't like to sort of feel proud of what they've done, but can you be proud of what you've done? Definitely. I don't like to say that, though. I'm a little bit backish. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Um, I remember coming into Bundaberg and thinking, well, I can't even draw, you know, stick figures, like I said, you know, but now I've come, I mean, that was, mind you, that was 15 years ago or something like that. So I've been doing it with Bill Bonner and all that for 15 years. And so, well, I started with him and then just continued on and yeah. just kept, kept at it and kept at it and I'll just keep at it because I've got this passion. You know, and but like they said, I think um, work life gets stifles a lot of very talented artists because you have to earn money. Yes, know. it's that mm. age old thing where we'd we'd like to do our art so we could pay for our living, mm. um, and that would be fantastic. But I think somebody once said to me about art that uh, you may not make a living to be wealthy, but the wealth that you get from the joy of art compensates for 
most of your monetary things. Um, well, it's a bit like um, uh, Vincent, you know, Van Gogh. He sold one or two paintings in his lifetime, and now they're worth millions. It's bizarre, isn't it? You know? I, I think people, you know, probably, and we're talking about some of the old masters, is that they get to appreciate art and probably didn't really understand it through time. But um, I think social media, do you think social media has helped oh, get the artwork? Mm. I know myself, I can go on things like Pinterest and go down the rabbit hole of looking at these amazing artists that I would never have had a chance to see worldwide on social media platforms and you get inspiration from that yes. um, what are the sort of mediums that you get inspiration of like in terms of social media um well uh, one of the artists that i always go to is gustav klimt i just love and i get a lot of inspiration with his his colors and stars and dots and the stuff that he does but the social media um, I don't know. <laughs> we were talking before that we started the show about some, I guess people don't think of it as an art form, but we were talking about if you look at some of the names that have made art, um, you know, worldwide, you know, we talk about Banksy. Oh, yes. We yes. talk about, you know, Pro Heart. Now, Pro Heart was, when Pro Heart first started doing his art, I know a lot of people looked at it and went, oh my god, what is that? But then, you know, we had Whiteley, his art, and then Norman Lindsay, um, even people like Looney now, and Gary Larson, you know, the far side. Yes, yes. A lot of people wouldn't consider that art, but mm. it is actually mm, art. Mm, um, mm. There's, you know, so many different art Well, forms. I think the Ken Dome was the uh, right place at right time because it was very naive, wasn't it, that art, like childlike. But the colours, I think. The colours, yeah. And he got the compositions right and stuff like that. I well, think I, that's what that was. I think Ken Doan probably opened up the world, at least Australia-wide, but the world. Probably because I don't think there was anybody back in that time that didn't have a Ken Doan. Yes. Towel. Doing a cover or towel. <laughs> or, so that's art, you know, it's art in a different form. But it is quite... It's very clever, yeah. It is. People don't even realise it, but just even looking at your dress, that is actually an art form because it is patterns, it's colour, it's composition. It is. Yeah. And yes. I think, you know, when you look around us, art is actually everywhere, you know, whether mm. it's in the rugs that we're on, whether it's a poster, whether it's a painting, but it's... Um, it's so much a part of our life. And oh, yeah. To actually see people really enjoying it now and to have people like you come on the show and tell us about your journey is absolutely fantastic and I appreciate it so much. Oh, so where can, we, where can we find Heather in... I know you said you've got 1770 coming up. Yes. And you've got your gallery. So are you planning on doing an exhibition in the near future? What a solo exhibition! Yeah, we there has been no. mention. <laughs> oh, there has been mention, and it has been put together about the gathering in the garden. Oh yes, which um, gathering in the garden? I will let you guys know about that, but that's in the pipeline. I can't thank you enough for coming on the show today, Heather. Thank you it's very much. It's been absolutely Karina. wonderful to have you, and I appreciate you talking about your journey. Okay. And um, I look forward to the next competition. I look forward to seeing your art uh, winning a few more surprise art awards. Yes, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm going to give it a red hot shot, put it that way. Right. But have so a lovely time. It is. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you, Karina. Thank you to everyone viewing today. Now, this is just, uh, this is another example of how art is just so accessible in this day and age. Go along to a gallery, join an art society, go along to something just for the sheer joy of it. But in the meantime, we've got some fantastic guests coming up in the next few weeks. And I, um, I can't wait to see you creating somewhere in this space in the wide bay. So thanks for now and uh, whatever you're doing, create, have a great time. <laughs>